Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you have noticed there's a rise in senseless violence in Singapore. And I think it's worthwhile to talk about them and see what we can do about it. Let's watch on, shall we? Recently, I've been noticing that there is quite a spat of senseless violence that are happening in Singapore. We are not talking about robbery. We are not talking about crimes of passion. We are not talking about the typical kind of uh, crime that we used to see in the past. For example, the most prominent case is there is a Yakult auntie, uh, 70 years old, was being assaulted and dies after the assault at Sengkang Block during delivery. A man 30 years old has been arrested and charged. And she's supposed to go on a holiday the next morning, but she's so committed to deliver the night before. And in fact, uh, after she was assaulted, she actually told people that, you know, she has delivery to make and so on, right? And unfortunately, after that, she passed away. And uh, it's such a senseless thing. Which person at 30 years old will assault someone that's 70 years old, a lady somehow, right? It's completely senseless, right? There was a another case of a priest... Uh, at St. Joseph Church at Bukit Timah, suddenly uh, being uh, assaulted by someone with a knife attack. And this is not a robbery, right? This is not a typical uh, a case of revenge or anger. Uh, we don't really know the, the case, what's the reason it is, but it seems so senseless. It is shocking to a very peace-loving country and with such a powerful rule of the law. There was another case uh, in October where a man, 41 years old, had died uh, after a, a knife attack at HCB block. You know, and our men, uh, 50 years old, and, uh, arrested. So more and more, these kind of cases are coming up, which shocks uh, a lot of Singaporeans, and it certainly surprised me as well. And these are cases at the surface, to me, seems like senseless violence. Now, are we the only country that having this senseless violence? Well, you know, let's watch on. Surprisingly, over the last two weeks, uh, the same kind of attack since we happened in China in a much bigger scale. There was a case in China where there was a driver drove a SUV or car uh, into a crowd and killed 35 people, right? This is pretty deadly and this is uh, very unheard of. And this is uh, certainly something that has shocked the whole world and certainly surprised uh, the whole of uh, China. Soon after that, uh, there was uh, another case uh, of eight person being killed in a stabbing incident at a school. And the assailant doesn't seem to be doing it um, because he's trying to rob someone or things like that. You know, it doesn't even seem like a terrorist uh, kind of attack. It's just a senseless attack. In the most uh, surprising uh, case, uh, 23 or 24 hours ago, a car drove into a crowd uh, outside a China primary school and injured many, many people. And fortunately, the driver was being uh, nabbed uh, and the driver was being dragged out of it and beaten almost to death by uh, by the mob. And suddenly, uh, this is something uh, very concerned. So this is also happening to China, but in a much bigger scale. And what we are experiencing in Singapore seems to be much smaller scale. I don't know whether the rest of the world is experiencing this, but these are the cases that just pop out uh, to me. It seems like senseless uh, attack. My hypothesis is this. I cannot prove it theoretically, but this is my gut view. As the economic performance of a place worsens, the cases of senseless violence increases. And that is probably why we are seeing more and more of it in China because the economic slowdown is, uh, is picking up at a rapid pace that the Chinese government has to step in with a lot of economic stimulus. And uh, these are not going to take effect uh, for quite some time. Certainly, uh, this is something of a big concern. And in Singapore, we are probably experiencing more and more of it as well. This kind of senseless crime is quite concerning because there's almost nothing we can do to prevent this as an individual. So in the case of a crime of passion or crime involving money, I certainly know what I can do to avoid, prevent or even minimize it. There are certain places I shouldn't go. There are certain hours I shouldn't uh, be leaving home. And there are certainly certain things I shouldn't be, be flaunting and things like that. So there are certain things that we can do to prevent you know, this kind of uh, typical classic crime. But in the case of senseless violence, you know, how do you prevent them, right? And this is quite concerning. So if my hypothesis is right, then our economy isn't doing that well. And as a result, senseless violence is on the rise. So is our economy doing well? Well, on the surface, some GDP numbers seem to indicate that we are, we are doing okay. But 
not so great as I do a straw poll across many of my business friends and things like that. Businesses has been on a decline significantly. And I think a decline of 20, 30 percent uh, in businesses seems to be uh, very common across all my SME friends. And this is certainly very concerning. There's some indication that my gut feel and my straw poll is correct. Singapore non-oil domestic export uh, has weakened quite uh, significantly with October export down 4.6%. And I think there are some analysts that actually predicted you'll be up 4%, right? So this is not just the number being wrong, but the even the sign where it's supposed to be positive has now turned negative uh, on the reverse uh, is wrong. And this is quite concerning. Peel the onion and look at the details. You'll find that the main culprit for the decline is China, right? China has gone down significantly in October. The non-oil domestic export has gone down, okay? And you break it up, you know, you'll see that the electronics have gone down a bit, but the non-electronic uh, export has gone down significantly in the month of October. And this also coincided with the launch of the stimulus by the Chinese uh, authorities. And this certainly is an indication that the Chinese economy is in serious trouble and we are feeling the impact of it because China is a big export country for Singapore. And if you were to look at a related market, which is Hong Kong, Hong Kong has already gone down significantly over September and October. And look at the numbers, right? And the scary part is a non-electronic export. We're looking at a negative 60% decline and a 50% decline. That's very serious on a year-on-year -year decline. So we are, we are really feeling something. And not to mention that uh, even uh, exports to Europe and to Japan has declined significantly year-on-year -year as well. So as a whole, Singapore economy seems to have some threat of decline because the Chinese economy is worsening significantly. The senseless violence seems to be an indication of Singapore economy not doing as good as the, the surface numbers are telling us. And that's quite serious, right? Because if the economy continues to decline and the senseless violence were to increase, then that's quite a serious case. Now, I'm probably over-extrapolating. There are many cases where there is a recession and I don't see the kind of senseless violence. But this kind seems to be simmering right now and suddenly exploding out. And this is quite uh, concerning because, as I said, uh, this is something that we can't control as individual. So on this note, I maybe my take is this. When there are signs of senseless violence, the community must jump in to help. So there are cases where the members of public have stepped up and stopped uh, people from injuring others. In the case of St. Joseph Church stabbing, there was a man who intervened, but uh, in this case, he was kind of trained because he was a retired uh, cop and headed Lee Kuan Yew's police security team. So thanks to the people who came to support and subdue the assailant. There's something I, while we want to also stop this kind of senseless violence, but do take note that you, you should protect your own safety whenever you can. It's easy to say, I don't know how I'll react in the car environment, but this is something we are quite concerned about. So this is not something that many people would like to hear, but I think it's better to be more cautious and more aware of the surrounding. So I'll just say this, that Singapore isn't as safe as it used to be. So let's take care of one another and look out for one another whenever we can and whenever it's possible. And I hope that these kind of cases are probably one off and won't repeat again. But if it does rise up again, I hope the community will rise up uh, to stop it. So let's uh, look after for each other and, and let's also uh, say a word of prayer for all these things to come to an end and hope that it won't happen again. So this is uh, Lou signing off and I'll see you in a day or two. Bye-bye.